Hey there, it's Eugene here. I'm going to do a quick video on the concept of deliberate practice or the general misunderstanding of the concept. Um, it's this phrase, the 10,000 hour rule or the 10 year rule or the deliberate practice rule. You've been hearing about it for a few years. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell came out with a book, Outliners, where he kind of mention it he has a lot of stories mostly case studies right this person did this for 10 years but he didn't really go on explaining the basic science behind it which is what daniel erickson originally came up with right he he wrote some peer review books and malcolm Gladwell will kind of oversimplify the research for, to reach a general audience but the problem with doing that is too is that you don't really understand the real foundations of what is causing the expertise being built and you have a lot of general misconceptions so generally in business talk about doing something for 10 years but this is not going to affect your expertise because this is not deliberate practice um, specifically in gamification, for example, they go so far, um, some of the consultants, not everyone, has to say that deliberate practice is a foundation of gamification and that video gamers specifically um, have been deliberately practicing video games for 10 years, 20 years, right? So they have most certainly reached the 10,000 hours required to become a world-class expert in this case they say they're a world-class expert at playing video games therefore if you're a manager you have to apply the gamification concepts into your workplace because your employees the younger ones 20 somethings 30 somethings are world-class experts at a video game playing and therefore if you make their problems or work environment more like a video game you're going to see hypothetically a re better result which is misapplied deductive logic but you 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 can see like in the book like uh reality is broken in some other gamification books on uh, they specifically talk about this and you look at the resources it's specifically gladwell malcolm gladwell and is not the primary source which is uh daniel erickson so pretty much what they're doing you're playing this telephone game right well daniel erickson how was the original person malcolm gladwell oversimplifies it for a general book for popular business they never see the original source and they go by what Malcolm Gladwell says and they have their own interpretation of it which is probably a misconception originally from what Malcolm Gladwell said and so you got this telephone game where well, the original message is distorted and you're promoting a bunch of nonsense um so basically deliberate practice is not just doing something specifically um there's four key components of it that um daniel sorry anders erickson not daniel erickson anders erickson talks about um so pretty much this uh, well-defined specific goals right so if you're a basketball player you have to have a specific well-defined goal say for example i'm going to make a three-pointer shot five times in a row before the day's over, right? I'm gonna dribble my ball around the court X amount of times without making a mistake. Where it has to be something very specific, uh, pretty much baby steps. So it's not a whole game you're playing. It's, some, it's a specific skill set you narrow down and you're gonna repeat again and again and have a specific goal of what you're gonna achieve that day during the training. Um, the other thing is you have to be focus right so that you have to focus on that specifically you cannot be daydreaming something else where you're doing something that is what your activity what you're doing in that moment is what you're focusing on right there's not there's no room for any other thoughts in your head um the third component is you need immediate feedback and generally feedback on what you did wrong right so if you're playing an instrument you got a note wrong you stop don't go any further you got the note wrong and then you have to go ahead and repeat the whole piece of music again and try to make it correct this time right so you got to get the immediate feedback on what you have done wrong specifically right and immediately correct it and lastly it has to push yourself outside the comfort zone right so it has to be exhausting either physically mentally or both 
And this is a concept of deliberate practice. So, for example, in the case of case of gamification, you're not deliberately practicing like with, with, with a video game. A video game, for the most part, is creating the illusion of a skill set, right? So you have your little character and you kill some goblins. And because you kill some goblins, you get some points and you level up. And then once you level up, you can pick, I want my character to be stronger, faster, have more shield. And then you're a little bit stronger and you go find some other stronger goblins. And they're harder now because the HP or whatever from the enemy AI now is harder. And now, you, but you get a magic sword and your hit points increase. So now it's easier, right? So you got this illusion of what's going on. It, it you're not repeating one little small task again and again and again, right? So games in the real world, like chess or sports, do have this deliberate practice. Um, system in order to create world expertise video games don't have this right video games are primarily entertainment they create the illusion of progress but they're not deliberate practice so the whole notion for example that the whole foundation a lot of these consultants is wrong they're selling you bs based on a false premise um in any case that's the basic concept of it and we can see here you can go to um You can see here Daniel Erickson talking about it specifically. He goes on saying, Research has shown that, generally speaking, once a person reaches the level of, of acceptable performance and automatically the additional years of practice don't lead to improvement. And if anything, the doctor, the teacher, the driver automatically, um, or the driver automatically, uh, the additional years of practice do not lead to any improvement. And it goes on saying that actually might make the person have uh, be worse off in their skills than someone who's brand new at it. He has like a couple of years on under the belt. Um, so this gives you like the whole notion there, right? So people just doing something are not improving their skill set. And it goes on, for example, purposeful practice. And you can see the basic concept I already talked about. Uh, well, well defined goals. Uh, practice is about putting a bunch of baby steps together, right? So you have that specific goal, you narrow it down, like make the three pointer shot five times in a row, and you have to focus on that specific uh, activity again and again and again. It's not playing a basketball game in general, but doing that one activity again and again and again until you improve it, which then applies into the game later on. Um, <clears throat> So pretty much, yeah, stay focused, get the immediate feedback, and get out of the conference zone. So what deliberate practice does to the brain specifically, it, um, your brain has um, gray, gray matter, which is the neurons, and white matter, which is this fat fetish sheet pretty much. So this fetish sheet called mailing sheet, uh, what it does, it wraps around the neurons in your brain associated with a specific skill. And you have to fire those specific neurons again and again and again for the brain to take notice, okay, this specific set of neurons are very important because we keep on firing them. So what the brain does is associates resources and starts building the mailing sheet this fatty sheet the white matter around that specific neurological network associated with a specific skill and what that sheet does is that the brain communicates a lot faster through that network because of the sheet kind of insulates it more or less uh, prevents it from deteriorating etc and you pretty much increase your skill set once the brain is paying attention and the way you get this brain to pay attention to it is going through the rules um talked about right you have a specific defined rule which you're focusing on the specific neurological pattern in your brain to do that specific activity right you're not doing um several times several things at the same time you're focusing on that uh you get the immediate feedback and this is key you get the immediate feedback you know where you made a mistake that triggers a brain, it's pretty much like this flash of activity, okay, I'm uh, paying attention now, and you immediately correct it, and the brain's paying attention and doing the 
physical hardwiring inside your head and pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. So that's what really is, right? It's not just doing something. Um, and that the basic concept of this has existed in the past. There's this actually this book by the Prussian, well, it's called uh, Frederick the Great on the Art of War, for example. And it's probably one of my favorite books on Frederick the Great specifically. So if you actually read this whole passage right here, it's quite interesting. He goes insane. Um, what is the use of life if one merely vegetates, right? What is the point of seeing if one only crams facts into his memory? In brief, what good is experience if it is not directed by reflection? Uh, Begetu, Begetus, it's a Roman uh, military writer, probably mis obviously mispronounced his name, stated that war must be a study and peace an exercise, and he's right. So what he's saying here is that you have to be reflecting on what <laughs> your, your pretty much expertise are and constantly be training yourself to do it. And this actually quite matches um, chess players, right? So chess players go through a process called praxis. So praxis, it's a basic concept from philosophy. So basically goes on saying you do something and you reflect on it also. So what, what chess players do, they, they have like a three, three uh, triangle of activities right so they actually a play chess b they read books about chess and three they're meditating on chess so for example one of the things they do they might follow along through the game of some grand master and they're trying to imagine in their heads what that grand master was thinking when he made X move, right? So that's the reflection part, which you see a lot of writers like Machiavelli, Levy, Sanofon, for example, they talk about this specifically. Yeah, you have to like uh, stop for a moment and reflect and what would this great com military commander do in this situation? What would you, you do if the enemy, enemy was a, the other side of the hill, etc.? So this is basically a reoccurring... Um, advice you hear since the ancient Greeks coming a lot again and again um and yes yes just to put it out there the number one activities for chess expertise is either solving uh chess problems so these are problems of chess say for example um you you have the the game at the beginning mid or end or, or, or something like that and you're supposed to defend yourself and work around the game a certain way where you can defend yourself or perform a checkmate play, right? So you got like five moves to create a checkmate or or not die, stuff, stuff like that. So that is primarily um, the training that creates expertise and reading books. So they have done this, this uh, study where the more books the chess master had on their bookshelf or the chess player in general, the higher the ranking of the chess game. And pretty much you're saying that, yeah, reading books is going to increase your expertise and take you to the next level. And the reason for this, you have two types of knowledge. You have one that's called tacit knowledge. And this is kind of the knowledge you see a lot of Eastern philosophies kind of talk about where they say, um, you're only going to understand something until you experience it. It's a basic concept like that. So imagine the of knowledge might be learning how to ride a bicycle, right? So you can read a book about riding a bicycle, but you're not really going to get it until you get on the bike, ride it. You can explain someone to someone how to ride a bicycle, but they're not going to really know how to ride a bicycle until they get up, get on the bike, fall a few times, get the hang of it, right? So that's the tacit knowledge you cannot really uh, pass it on um, and you cannot codify like uh, like, put, like write it down right and then there's explicit knowledge which is knowledge you can write down and pretty much is this facts for example and what they've they've determined is that at the beginning you want to develop a level of tacit knowledge which is pretty much playing the game or going knocking doors etc if you're doing sales and develop a base 
Well, see, like my mic got cut up there a little bit. Uh, I think I was talking about pretty much the usefulness of reading books and having explicit knowledge once you have had a foundation on tacit knowledge. Right, so reading books eventually becomes the most important activity that the chess players were doing. Um, and that applies to other domains um, also, especially like uh, cognitive demand of domains, domains. So it's not necessarily just doing something, but I mean, just reading books on the specific subject is going to increase your expertise. Um, also, another notion about reading books, it doesn't necessarily have to be explicit knowledge when you're reading a book that you're gaining. Um, stories, uh, for example, can create a form of tacit knowledge. If you're reading like a novel, what it is is that your brain rewires itself in order to understand the social complex drama that you're, you're reading the story, right? So you have to understand it character, character, uh, motivation, etc. right? So in order to understand what you're reading, your brain creates this neurological pattern, which then is later applied into the real world. So that's a form of tacit knowledge you gain through explicit knowledge, which is a book. Um, and you gain that through something called implicit learning. I'm not going to go into that. But basically, we can finish here reading here. Um, experience deserves to be investigated, for it is only after repeated examination of what one has done that the artist has succeeds in understanding principles, and in moments of leisure, in times of rest, that new material is prepared for experiment. So I'm talking about experiment, doing something, right? Uh, meditating. Such investigations are the product of applied mind, but this diligence is rare and, on the contrary, it's common to see men who have used all of their limbs without ones in their lives having utilized their minds. Uh, thought, the faculty of combining ideas, is what distinguishes man from the beast of burden. A mule who has carried a pack for ten campaigns under Prince Eugene will be no better a tactician for it, and it must be confessed to the disgrace of humanity that many men grow old in an otherwise respectable profession without making any greater progress than this mule, which this is exactly what Erickson is talking about, right? So yes, because you're doing something for 10, 20 years, doesn't mean that you're increasing your expertise unless you are applying yourself and deliberately trying to improve your skill set, which is this is what Frederick the Great is talking about, right? You have to meditate, experiment, and you, in the time that you're not actually working, um, try to work and develop your skill sets. If not, you're just going to go through the automated, going through the motions path, right, which Erickson talks about, and you're probably going to be worse off than the new um, professional that has like two, three, four, or five years under his belt once you go along the way, unless you're working to improve yourself right so it's kind of like a muddy hill right unless you're going up you're sliding down um to finish off to follow the routine of service to become occupied with the care of the fodder and lodgings to march when the army marches camp when he camps fight when he fights for the great majority of officers this is what is meant by having served campaign grown old in the harness right so you hear a lot of people saying like uh, older guys um i have a 20 years of experience 10 20 years experience doing this which i heard someone else say this can't remember who it was but they said the notion that that person does not have 10 years they have one year repeated 10 times meaning that yeah you haven't grown really um you have the basic skills that you had at once but you have not improved on that which is uh, very top provoking um, For this reason, one sees so many soldiers occupied with trifling manners and rusted by gross ignorance. Instead of soaring audaciously among the clouds, such men know only how to crawl methodically in the mire. They are never perplexed and will never know the causes of the triumphs or defeats. And this is one of the reasons why Frederick de Grey is one of my favorite uh characters in history but that's the basic gist of it um that video turned out to be a lot longer than i wanted um i, mean, I hope you enjoyed it